This video is brought to you by Skillshare. More about them later in the video. Steel versus concrete. Is one better than the other? The answer is not as easy as you may think. So let's break down the benefits and drawbacks of both of them. Should I build in steel or should I build in concrete? My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. Well, let's start off with steel. What are some of the benefits? Well, the fact that it's strong, it's more consistent, it's an easy material to build with. You can do a lot of off-site labor for these type of buildings. Also lightweight. So it means that you can save money on foundations. So if you're building tall, there's a lot of benefits to building a steel structure as it lowers the amount of weight that you have to continue all the way to the foundations. So potentially you can save a lot of money in the foundations that you're putting into the ground. However, steel is a relatively expensive material despite the additional cost savings that we just talked about. And it's also not very fire resistant and potentially has durability problems. But that's just a quick overview. We will break them down in more context so you can have a better understanding. But let's just jump across the concrete and see what it has to offer. Concrete is a relatively strong and versatile material. You can essentially just make a mold and pour any single shape. It's also relatively inexpensive as the amount of effort to place it is quite cheap. It also has the added benefit of being very durable and very fire resistant for the material that it is making it an ideal building material. However, it produces a lot of embodied carbon through the production of making cement products. And there's the fact that it's a very heavy material for the strength that you can achieve relative to steel and also is not very good under tension. So typically you need to reinforce those sections to overcome some of its weaknesses. So you will need some steel in any concrete building. Unless of course you're just forming arches and specifically making a structure that is only supported under gravity. And due to some of these drawbacks, it means that it does limit the amount of accessibility that you have and the size of the structures that you need to build with it. But it does make it really good in different areas and aspects due to the benefits that we just talked about. Again, this is just a brief overview and we'll go into more detail. Let's move back to steel to have a really thorough breakdown. Steel is typically susceptible to corrosion as it can be attacked and rusted away. You can see that quite often in buildings rusting, and even sometimes in concrete structures where you can see concrete cancer, steel is specifically susceptible to this type of attack. There is a number of different ways you can get around it through adding corrosion protection, galvanization, or paint, which need maintenance. However, there are only stop gaps to overcome some of the weaknesses and add additional costs to the system. So when you're looking at a steel structure, making sure you're looking at it, the corrosion protection and does it need to happen. If it's completely inside, you may be okay, but on the external edge of the building, there may be big concerns. Fire resistance is also another drawback. As steel typically heats up, it reduces in strength. As it heats up, it becomes weaker. It's why we're able to use it as we are and bend it into shapes. But this is a drawback in a fire situation where your structure needs to maintain strength as the heat of the building heats up to making sure that occupants can leave the building and not have catastrophic collapses. So typically it does mean that you need to have additional fire protection on a steel structure to overcome this. So whether this be intermittent paint, or additional fire protection around your structure, making it bigger and heavier for the additional protection that you need. And now we're saying steel is specifically strong. That does mean that if you're only at section capacity, you're okay. But as we can get long slender structures that potentially can still resist that weight, it becomes more susceptible to buckling. As buckling is the limited capacity of the outer plane movement, as you compress something, there's a little movement out of the way and a system will buckle before the true capacity of the steel is achieved. So sometimes you need additional buckling braces in the system to achieve the true capacity of a steel system. With the reduction in weight, while that's a good thing for the reduction in foundations, it does potentially have an issue with vibration as you can make amazing long thin structures that we can see in such things as Tacoma Narrows or other areas, but they were specifically susceptible to vibration and harmonic frequencies. It's a lot easier to generate the movement in the building as it bounces upwards and down. So as you need less ability to bounce the structure as the weight of the structure is reduced, it means it can be more susceptible to human induced vibrations, which can make a bad environment for the people that they work in. Now, if you do know about it, it just means that you need to watch out for it and potentially make the structure stiffer to overcome some of these problems. So it's not just looking at deflections and strength, but also potentially looking at vibration. Cost is also another thing potentially with some steel structures, if you're not careful, can be blown out as well. Steel structures can be more susceptible to other alternatives such as timber or concrete. Some additional problems with steel structures that you potentially don't see in other systems is the fact that they're potentially susceptible to thermal expansion. As they heat up, they expand. So it means that over structures of a certain size, that over 50 meters, need to have expansion joints 
to overcome the additional locked-in stresses from the movement from that heat. So it needs special, careful consideration and detailing of the structural engineer. And as the structure is not contiguous, it's potentially in parts, it's like a giant Meccano set, the connections are your biggest weak point. So it's something that needs to be carefully considered in detail. How do you put together and making sure that those connections are not the weakest point in the structure as you don't want those areas to fail. So you want to look at hierarchy of failures, making sure that you're failing in the beam and not the connection as having a connection failure can be catastrophic and have the whole building collapse around you, which is not good for anyone. So it doesn't give that robustness or the disproportionate collapse considerations, if not carefully considered. And it is a little bit lighter. Potentially it's suffered a little bit of fatigue from movement backwards and forwards. Now, concrete structures do have this issue as well, but the lightness means that it can be more susceptible to vibration and movement, meaning it can be more susceptible to fatigue. So looking at the connections and specifically in areas that vibrate a lot, making sure that you're detailing and got an additional strength on areas that may be susceptible to fatigue. And as we were saying before, one cost that you need to add on to any steel structure, we're talking about durability and corrosion protection. Potentially you need to have a maintenance regime on any steel structure to make sure that it's maintaining the design life that it needs. So there's additional ongoing costs potentially to any steel building, making sure that you're maintaining the structure. So these are just some of the issues that you need to carefully consider in any steel building to make sure that your structure is safe, durable, and cost effective. Now let's look at some of the faults of a concrete building. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare has an amazing online learning community with thousands of videos updated on a regular basis that's premium and ad free. You can also take it on the go so wherever you are, you can have access to it. Whether you're at it and about in a coffee shop, traveling, you can take Skillshare with you so you can learn on the go. They also have a range of content that you can learn from. Whether you're trying to learn from those hard skills such as Python, or you need to pick up on some of those soft skills as a manager, so looking at how to run remote teams, even looking at your communication skills. One of the videos that I've been learning from recently a lot is from Rebecca Minkoff. She has a course where you can learn how to build your brand both professionally and personally to help bring your business up to the next level or even take control of your own career. So we've talked about your brand values and we've talked about your brand's distinction. Now it's time to get into the look and feel of what does it look like when you bring this brand to life. The first 500 people to click the link in the below description will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. Hope to see you over there. Now let's get back to the content. Now that we've gone through some of the benefits of steel, we can see that concrete overcomes a lot of these. However, there are some major drawbacks with concrete buildings. It's a fact that they crack. When you pour a concrete structure, it needs to lose moisture and it has shrinkage and creep effects as it's no good under tension and that's why you need to put steel in the correct locations. However, there's different types of cracking that you need to carefully consider. The first one is potentially shrinkage. As shrinkage, as the concrete sets and gets harder, it loses water, so the overall volume of the concrete reduces. This puts additional tensile strain in your building. So you need to make sure that you've got additional reinforcement that's beyond what you need for strength to making sure that you're controlling the shrinkage in the system. And sometimes even with strength design, you need to make sure that you're putting additional reinforcement in there so it doesn't crack too early, such under service conditions, as people don't generally like to see cracks. And so sometimes you may be governed by a service condition over a strength condition. So sometimes you've got additional steel in the system due to this biggest letdown. Thermal expansion is also something that happens in concrete, but nowhere near as much as it happens in steel. So you still need to maintain in those jointing locations as any material that heats up will expand. That expansion can also add additional thermal cracking problems. So making sure that you're overcoming anywhere that the concrete is going to see tension, you're reinforcing it specifically to make sure it resists those loads. Now, while we were saying that concrete is good at durability, you do need to have careful consideration of rent the reinforce from getting attacked. As we were saying, that steel is bad under corrosion protection and durability. And despite it being hidden inside the concrete, water can get to it and help it corrode. So it means that you need to make sure you've got the correct concrete covers or the protection on the outside to maintain the durability of steel with inside. As any steel that starts to corrode will cause concrete cancer and cause additional spalling and degradation of the structure. Also in the wrong environment, you need to be specifically careful with concrete as potentially the aggregate and the cement mix can be attacked by the chemicals around it, such as an alkali silica attack where the concrete starts to expand and causing cracking and degradation early. So in the wrong conditions, you need to make sure that you've got the right mix of concrete to make sure it's not susceptible in these specific locations. 
Another major drawback, as we're saying, concrete is heavy. So the load on the structure is increased. So the load that you need to design for and resist through the whole height of the building is larger by having a concrete system. But that added weight is that benefit for that vibration requirement as it needs more effort to make the system move. So typically a concrete structure is less susceptible to vibration. However, in the larger spans, it does bring it back depending on the stiffness of your building. And to be able to achieve full strength, you need to make sure your concrete is cured correctly. So after it's placed on site, making sure you're maintaining its wetness, and making sure it's not losing as much water as it potentially could. So correct curing is the requirement to making sure that it achieves the strength that is needed on site. As a major drawback, there's like after you pour, takes three to four days to cure fully and even longer. So making sure that you're slowing down the rate of curing to reduce the amount of shrinkage effect and increase the strength of your building after it's affected. As just pouring concrete, you can have a very vast different ranges of strengths if it's not cured correctly. But let's just run into some of the benefits. We're saying that it was specifically more durable, really robust for what it needs to be, meaning that it can survive for a longer time over many different materials. Under compressive actions, it's relatively strong for what we need, meaning that it's good in high rise structures and cores and places that see a lot of compressive force. And it's specifically more versatile as we're saying, we can pour it into any shape. We can just make any mold and make anything look the way we want to, provided the reinforcement inside is detailed correctly. It's relatively fire resistant as it doesn't break down really early under heat temperatures, but also as it is a dense material, it's also very soundproof, meaning it's great if you need to have sound separations between floors or in walls. So it's a great sound insulator if detailed in the right way. And as it is a giant thermal mass, it's a great way for energy efficiency as you can build up a lot of stored energy in a concrete structure, meaning that the building won't change temperatures as dramatically as it heats up and cools down over time. So it's a great way of maintaining energy efficiency in any structure. And it's relatively cheap, meaning that it's relatively cost competitive. And that's why a lot of buildings, specifically in Australia, are built out of concrete due to its versatility and cost effectiveness and the ability to form any shape, meaning it's highly versatile and cheap for the material that it is. Steel, on the other hand, has many benefits. It's relatively strong. You get relatively lightweight systems for what it needs, and you get really thin profiles that can span a long way, making them look effortless, potentially going down to nothing. So a steel structure can look amazingly thin if detailed in the correct way. Steel is a relatively homogeneous material, meaning that what you buy is what you get, unlike concrete, which is highly dependent on the mix, placement, and curing. So it means that you get the behavior that you're expecting every single time. And most of the time, provided it's in the correct way, it does provide in a ductile way, meaning that things will stretch and move before you have an instantaneous catastrophic failure. Still does have some versatility, as you can cut and weld it and make it into any shape. But the more complex the shape is, the more costly it is to manufacture as you need to bespoke each connection and weld them together. Despite the versatility, it does mean that a more complex structure will be more expensive. And there's another two key benefits here that specifically outshine what a concrete structure has, is the fact that firstly, for environmental effects, steel can be easily recycled. You can pull the steel element out of a building, either reuse it in another location or melt it down into a new structure, and make it into a new system, which you can't do out of concrete. So the recyclability of a steel system is a big major win in this point. And also another benefit is the fact that speed of construction, if detailed in the correct way and offsite and brought to the system, it is a lot quicker to build a steel structure as the steel structure, as soon as it's in place is ready to go unlike concrete, which needs to have time to cure and actually achieve the strengths before it can actually have the design loads on it. Where if you put a steel element down, it's as strong as it needs to be the minute it's placed there. So it's a lot quicker to build a steel system than it is a concrete structure where you need to wait for the concrete to cure. So we talk about speed of construction, steel wins. We talk about constructability and versatility, concrete wins. If we talk about durability, we again give that to concrete. And if we talk about fire, and vibration, again, concrete gets another two wins here. But if we talk about lightness, thinness, and how structures can appear, steel is definitely the winner here as it adds great big, fast, open sections, making what looks like impossible systems 
uh, due to the strength of steel can achieve. But as we can see, it's not just about which one wins over the other. There's benefits and pros of both of them. So it's using the right material for the right location. However, some of these benefits, especially for concrete, can be overcome by doing a precast structure. I have a link to a video here about some of the key aspects of precast design that you need to have, making sure that you're bringing your precast design to the next level. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's really two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. And the quality of my content would not be the level that it is without their support. So I'd like to thank them. I hope you enjoy this content and I hope to see you next week.